Alright guys, welcome back to Days of Darkness and welcome to my review of Friday the 13th, 2009. This obviously came out in 2009, starring Jared Padalecki, Daniel uh, Panabaker, and Amanda Rigetti, and was directed by Marcus Nispel. Now, uh, let's just hop right into this, man. Uh, spoiler free section obviously here to start us out. Um, this one is very, very polarizing uh anytime i talk to horror fans about this especially friday the 13th fans people either love it or they fucking hate it and there's no in between this is just one of those movies that's extremely polarizing with people i more so hear people lean on the side of hating it i and i'm i'm one of those guys that's somewhere in the middle I can take the good things out of this movie and I can take the bad things and there are plenty of both. I personally believe there's more good to be had in this movie than bad. Uh, I don't think this is a terrible film. I definitely don't think it's a terrible slasher film. But I think there were some opportunities that were missed out on. I feel as though... I obviously won't get into what the story is in case you haven't seen it. Um... I feel like this is one of those movies that really missed out on a really, really interesting story. Mind you, the story we get, honestly, for a Friday the 13th film is pretty interesting. However, it unfortunately gets bogged down by, you know, filmmakers or the studio or whoever. Uh, deciding that they need the typical slasher formula to go along with that, which I'm not opposed to personally. Uh, but that's really the main thing that people bitch about with this movie is that they don't like the characters at all. Which, when you're talking about the slasher genre, it's hard to be picky about that. But <clears throat> it's one thing for like 80s slashers to have that. But in two, that not saying it should just be. Not saying that it's an excuse, so, oh, it's way in the 80s, so it's okay if characters are shit. No, if characters are shit, characters are shit, and it should be acknowledged, no matter what. But anyways, I feel like, by this point, the Friday the 13th franchise had evolved so much, and the lore had become so interesting and intriguing, that I think... You can kind of go away from that formula a little bit. That formulaic, kids go to the lake, kids get killed. Kids go to the lake, kids get killed. Kids go to New York and space and get killed. Okay, well they tried to go away from the formula, but that's not what I mean. I mean in a good way. And to this film's credit, like I said, there the story we get, it's pretty interesting. You know, uh, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little, you know, with a remake, you are afforded the chance to change some things. And I'll say it right now. Uh, the things that they do kind of tweak and change and adjust. I don't mind any of it. Uh, I don't mind any of it at all. I think the stuff that they did change in it was either needed for the story or I think it was, you know, I just... I like when filmmakers take risks, as I've said multiple times, and, uh, and yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna stop rambling, uh, but besides that, uh, Derek fucking Mears as Jason Voorhees is phenomenal. He is absolutely incredible in this role. Uh, you can tell that he cares a lot about... Or he care. I mean, this movie came out 11 years ago, so... <laughs> no. 12 years ago now. Holy shit. Well, happy 2021, by the way. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, oh my god. That's... You just witnessed me have a holy shit, I'm getting old moment there. But, um... <laughs> but no. Uh, any interview you see with Derek, he is extremely... Uh... 
he's always like, I fucking love Friday the 13th. I grew up, he's like, oh, I grew up watching Friday the 13th movies. So I can only imagine the chance, the, how excited he was to play this role. And you can tell he just, he brings such a presence to that role. He's the best Jason uh, since Kane Hodder, which much like Kane Hodder, he's not my favorite Jason. That'll always belong his head white, no matter what. Um, but that's like saying, I like, you know, fucking, I like Sour Patch Kids more than I like Gummy Bears. I still love them both. I still love all of it. But, you know, one just, uh, uh, but that's beside the point. He does a fucking fantastic job in this movie. And I really hope all this lawsuit bullshit gets settled very soon or just i hope something can happen with this series because damn it i want another friday the 13th movie and i want it to be played by Derek Mears, and i will fucking flip a desk or something if it does not happen please <laughs> please and don't go to space again either uh let's see here but yeah as far as the characters go though I like the actual core characters in this movie uh, I love Clay. I love his whole arc with what I will get into here in a second. Uh, but the other characters, the characters that people say are shit. I know I'm kind of bouncing around here a lot. But, um... I don't hate them. I They're not, they're not terrible. They're Friday the 13th characters. I mean, it's... By this point... You should know you should know what to expect. This is the twelfth movie in this fucking franchise. Like you should know what to expect. I do wish their roles were reduced a little bit. I don't think we needed as much of them in this movie. I think it should have been much more focused on Clay and what was going on with him. Not saying it's not focused on Clay, but you know. Here nor there. But anyways, guys, uh, this <laughs> spoiler-free section is already running on like seven or so minutes. <clears throat> so we're just going to pop right into the spoiler section. Let's spoil the shit out of this motherfucker. All right, spoiler time. Your ass has been warned. Now, uh, starting off the opening of this movie, I really, really, really like. I would even go as far as to say... I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it is one of my favorite openings in the entire Friday franchise. Not strictly, but a big reason is because of how fucking long it is. It's like its own little movie, which is really, really cool. <laughs> um, so we start off with a little flashback to 1980. Uh, I believe, yeah, it says 1980 in the, uh, on the uh, screen. And it's uh, just basically a little remake of the ending of part one. Uh, Pamela, who's... I think the actress who played Pamela does a pretty good job. Uh, you know, I've not really minded any of the... Um, Betsy Palmer uh, replacements or anything like that. I think the one in Freddy vs. Jason was good. And I think this one is good too. But anyways, uh, obviously this ends with... <clears throat> ooh, excuse me. Her getting her head lopped off in like a quick little 30 second, 40 second thing, you know. You should have been watching him every minute, all that jazz. And uh, gets her head lopped off and then we get the first big point of contention. At least in my own mind. I have not really heard people bitch too much about this. Which I would think people would. But uh, it kind of is revealed that Jason has just been hiding in the woods this whole time. Like he, I guess, he was thought to have drowned, but he just escaped or, or got out of it somehow or washed up on shore and woke up or something. But uh, he is shown to be very much alive and he watched his mom get beheaded. And as someone who subscribes to the theory that in the original series, he did in fact die and then was resurrected by the lake or whatever you want to say. The hateful spirit of his mom or however you want to put it. Um, and then you have to think about, well, how did he age so rapidly? And you really have to... I love the original series. 
uh, with all my heart. I really do. Uh, but that you do have to kind of mm, connect some dots in your head if you want everything that makes sense. Which I am a guy who wants his movies to make sense. Fuck me, right? But uh, you don't really have to worry about that here. Because he's just shown to be alive. And I don't mind it. It's a remake. You can change things. Some people think he was alive in the originals anyways. So they're not going to care. But for people like me, I, just, I don't mind it. You know, I think it allows the Jason character to be more, I'm, I won't say of a menace, more of a menace, but it allows him to behave more as a human would behave, which I know in parts like one through four, he's pretty damn human already, but it allows him to be this hunter like jason is a full blown hunter he's fucking shooting arrows he's laying traps he has this whole underground tunnel system thing with fucking bells that ring if people trip over them like this dude has been at this lake this whole time and he's had so much time to do all this crazy shit and it's like jason is I don't like I like that Jason isn't stupid, which I've never really considered, especially parts one through four. I would not consider him to be a stupid slasher or anything like that. But in the later ones, he is shown to just be a big, big dumb oaf with a machete. You know, I I mean, Freddy says it best. You're just a big, stupid dog who can't stop eating. And I like that we've gotten back to that the roots of that character and have him be this like fucking brutal mean hunter he's just absolutely terrifying and i adore it uh so that's the first big change in my mind but some people they don't see it as a change but whatever uh but as far as jason being much more nimble and he runs he actually does run in this movie uh which i guess people make a big fucking deal about i don't see why he ran in the original so i don't fucking get it but whatever <laughs> Uh, but I absolutely love Jason in this. I'm, Derek Mears as well is phenomenal under the mask. Under the mask, under the makeup. You know what I'm saying. Uh, but anyways, so we go off of that Pamela flashback to present day. Uh, I like, by the way, a little side note. This might be a long review. <laughs> I like when films that have a flashback and then a flash forward or a spring forward to the present day. I like when it just says present day. Because it doesn't date the movie. Like I, I remember watching one movie where it started with a flashback. And then it says like 1999. I'm like well motherfucker 1999 was like 20 something years ago. So that's that <laughs> immediately dates the movie and kind of takes me out of it. Because I was two in 1999. Hopefully I just made a lot of you feel old. <laughs> But anyways, uh, so I really like that, you know, present day. <clears throat> and uh, the it starts out with its own group. We haven't even gotten a title card yet. Shout out to Dead Meat. Title card. Anyways, uh, we haven't even gotten our title card yet. And already uh, we have a group of teens ready to get their asses killed. And they are here looking for the devil's lettuce. They are looking for some marijuana to sell. At least the uh, the two guys are. I think the rest of them are just there to have fun. But uh, these two guys are on a mission. Like they're on a <laughs> the guy with the glasses on a jeep is on a GPS, like looking around. It's like where the fuck is it? <clears throat> and so they set up camp, and then the bloodshed begins. Some of them go off and fuck. Some of them go off just to take a walk. One guy goes to take a piss, so they're all separated, which is a no-no at Crystal Lake, but they don't know that yet. <laughs> so, uh, first guy gets killed pretty pretty disappointingly off-screen. Uh, I know I'll get into the kill of the film later, but, eh, you know, kind of blows. First Jason Voorhees kill on the big screen in how many years, and it's off-screen. That kind of sucks. But anyways, uh, for the important thing in this opening section is that we get uh, Whitney, who is um, 
is on a walk with her boyfriend and they end up going, which separates them from the rest of the group. And while all of them are getting killed, <laughs> um, she and her boyfriend walk into this old decrepit cabin, which you find out very quickly is home to Jason Voorhees himself. And we get a pretty cool reveal of her opening this locket, which has Pamela Voorhees, a picture of Pam inside of it. And her boyfriend makes the obligatory comment, which I'm sure will have no impact on the rest of the story. That, uh, oh my god, that kind of looks like you. Which, you know, if you line up the, uh, Amanda Rigetti and the woman who played Pam in the beginning, it does. And I think it bears a pretty okay resemblance. Uh, nothing mind-blowing or anything, but solid casting there. I will give props for that. <clears throat> but, um, they... <laughs> they end up also finding another one of Jason's little trinkets, which is a little more sinister. And that's Pam's actual fucking severed head, which is a nice callback to the originals. This time it's in a literal just hole in the fucking wall, which is really cool. Like, it's not on just the mantle, which I'm fine with, but it's in this, like, old, decrepit, this punched-in hole, and he reaches into it like a dumbass and pulls it out, and they're like, we better fucking go. Uh, but Jason is there to uh, wreak some havoc, and he ends up, he actually ends up going via those tunnels that I mentioned. So he's stabbing through the floor, and that gets pretty grisly, and we will talk about that later in our Kill of the Film section. But uh, but yeah, really cool. She ends up running out of there. The boyfriend does not make it. <laughs> but uh, So she ends up running out of there, and we get... The that's the opening of the movie is she ends up going back to the campsite. Everyone is fucking dead or is in the process of being dead. And we get our opening title card. Fucking insane. <laughs> what a great opening. And then we get uh, introduced to Clay, who is looking for his sister. And then we get introduced to the college kids, the second group of kids, which I like the first group more. Because, um, it's, they just seem, they actually seem like friends, first of all, <laughs> which I will give the second group a pass writing wise, because I think that was intentional for them to not really all seem like the best of buddies or anything like that. Cause they're all there. Cause Trent has money and this is dad's house, you know, typical rich guy bullshit. Um, no, I mean, you can have you can have money and be a good person, but this guy has money and is not a good person at all. So he ends up uh, <clears throat> bringing all these people to his house because he needs to have some sort of relationships with people in some way. But yeah, they, uh, they do not seem like friends, and it's even alluded to and stuff like that. But I just feel like the first group... I feel like it has more impact when all of them get killed, except for Whitney. Uh, just because they really seem like they care about one another. And they actually seem like they give a shit about each other. So when they die, you know, it's it's sad. I'm not going to act like they're the most in-depth characters in the world. They're not. But, you know, it tugs at the heartstrings a little bit when they literally see each other get killed. It's like, fuck, man. But these, these new people, it seems like they don't really give a shit about each other anyways. Uh, I mean, fucking Clay actually cares about, oh, what's her name? I'm gonna, Daniel Padabaker's character, actually I have IMDB up, so I'm just gonna cheat. <laughs> fucking Jenna. <laughs> he cares about Jenna, but other than that, no one really gives a shit about each other. Actually, Chewie and his buddy care about one another. That's a really cool little group. And Chewie is also really funny in this. He's probably of all of the uh of all of the throwaway characters, if you want to call them that, he's he's the best. He's the comedic relief. Uh played by Aaron Yu. Really, really cool stuff here. He's he's funny. <laughs> um And then yeah, we get a nice little nice little slasher fit flick here. Uh, not the, not the best in the world, you know, I'm not gonna act like these are the best kills in the franchise, they're not, uh, which 
with given the age of special effects they really should be a lot better but it's whatever we do get some solid stuff as far as that is concerned which we will get into with kill the film um and yeah oh and another thing i forgot to mention i really like that jason does not start out with his hockey mask that he actually finds the hockey mask from a <laughs> from a uh, <laughs> this i don't even know what you'd call him he's a fucking redneck like without a doubt he is a full-blown weed selling porn magazine licking no i'm not lying porn magazine licking fucking weirdo <laughs> And he ends up getting the mask from him. Uh, which, that guy is so... As far as performance is, is concerned, everyone does a pretty good job. I think I think everyone plays their role well. And they're, they do what they can with what they are given. But that fucking guy, man, he is hilarious. He is so fucking funny. Especially, like, when Clay comes up to ask him about, uh, about <laughs> like, hey, have you seen this girl or whatever? And he goes like, oh boy, I wish I did. But nah, I ain't seen her. And then he goes back and says, oh man, do you want to, you want to buy some weed? <laughs> he's just funny. Uh, he's a fucking creep too. But Jason ends up, you know, slicing his throat, which is a cool kill. Uh, it's unfortunate though, because that was an all They used an alternative take of that. And then the original, or I don't know if they shot this afterwards or whatever. But in the other version of this kill when he kills this hillbilly like the guy actually puts the mask the hockey mask on and so when jason kills him he grabs him by the hair and he chops his fucking head off and then he takes the mask off the head and throws it aside and yada yada puts it on there you go but uh in this in the actual movie he slits his throat and there's a big continuity error error because when uh, jenna and clay are hiding away from jason trying to hide from him He's carrying the redneck's body, and when he sets him down, he's headless. So that was a big, like, wait, what the fuck? And it's, and it couldn't have been anybody else, because no one has gotten their head cut off at this point. No one gets their head cut off at all in this movie. But, uh, but yeah, I've seen this movie a couple too many times, <laughs> as with a lot of this series. But, uh, you know, little fucking nitpicks aside... I enjoy this movie for what it is. Uh, I really like, like I said, I really like the Clay story of him trying to look for his sister and trying to reunite with her. And there's a lot of cool moments with that where he's asking, he asks this old woman uh, about her and she went to Crystal Lake and all this. And she just, she just knows. She's like, she's fucked, man. She's gone. I'm sorry, but she's gone. Uh, well, she wasn't, she isn't nearly that nice about it, but, uh, she goes, people come around here, they're gone for good. Oh, people go missing here, they're gone for good. Um, uh, we just all want to be left alone, and so does he. So it's like, these people know about Jason. Like, they know about him, and they just, they fucking leave him alone. They leave him alone, and he leaves them, them alone, and tourists come, and they get killed, and they're just... Which I really like that mystique around that character. It kind of brings that back a little bit. I like, I like him being this small town legend. I know, in the original series, I like, in like the later movies that he ends up being this big fucking nationwide story. But I like that they dial that back a lot in this and the remake and make him this town like ghost. It's really cool shit. Uh, but yeah, that story is really cool. It's nice when they eventually meet back up and they're able to reunite. They don't really get a lot of time to celebrate because obviously Jason's chasing them. But overall, I really, really like that story. And uh, I guess we'll just pop right into the ending here. Um, so everyone's dead. Obviously, comes with the territory, Friday the 13th. And uh, it's just Jenna, Whitney, and Clay left. And in a shocking twist where they're running away from Jason, Jenna actually gets killed, which you would think, okay, that's our final girl. She's nice. She's sweet. There's a little love interesty thing going on there with her and Clay. Uh, but no, man, Jason fucking, <laughs> Jason just kills her. And it's like, she's trying to crawl through this hole. She's the last one to crawl through it. And then bam, 
Bam! I think it's a pickaxe. It's either a pickaxe or his machete. It's one of the two. Uh, but yeah, she gets fucking killed, man. Decisively. Like, she's done. And, um... So, now it's just Clay and Whitney. They have a little battle in the barn. I don't know if I super believe Clay being able to fight big-ass fucking Derek Mears, Jason. But whatever. Like, there's scenes where Clay, like... I don't want to say overpowers him. But, like... <laughs> He gets a couple shots in where I'm like, mm. <laughs> but it's whatever, man. It's a cool fight nonetheless and uh, ends up with Jason first getting hung. Like they throw this chain into this wood chipper, which is propped up on one of the high beams in the barn and Jason gets hung. That snaps and then they end up throwing the chain in there and he gets his fucking head chopped to shit with a wood chipper like you can even see it too fucking absolutely brutal brutal shit and uh whitney ends up uh in a pretty shitty line she's like say uh say hi to mommy or in hell or something like that it's kind of there's a couple shitty little lines of dialogue here and there where i'm just like mm, <laughs> come on man uh most notably Trent when he drops his gun in the uh in the little creek or whatever little body of water and he's like where the fuck are you gun <laughs> that shit's pretty funny but uh but yeah man um and then they dump his ass in the lake and in a nice really really cool callback to the original uh, where Jason actually busts through the dock and then grabs Whitney and that's how the movie ends really really cool shit right there man <clears throat> so overall uh, would I recommend this movie yeah absolutely I absolutely recommend this movie uh, people shit on it a lot but I think people also need to realize some of the stuff we got before this. Freddy vs. Jason is cool, but I'm talking like Jason X and Jason goes to hell and Jason takes me. Like you gotta you gotta keep a lot of that in mind whenever you're <laughs> uh bitching about this one. I'm not saying it's not I'm not saying it's perfect. I wouldn't put this anywhere near the originals, but pump the brakes a little bit, man. <laughs> like I've heard people say like, oh this is the worst in the franchise. I'm like, really? The worst in the franchise. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> but anyways, man. Uh, that'll do it for the review portion of the film. But you know what's coming, motherfucker. We gotta get into my blood. Well, not mine. <laughs> we gotta get into the blood, the guts, the gory bits. We gotta get into my kill of the film. Stick around. I can fully acknowledge that Friday the 13th 2009 does have its issues. I do enjoy the movie. Uh, I, I don't really have a big problem with it. I think it's a harmless remake. But there are some things that are like me. However, the kills, the carnage candy, the blood, and the guts is not one of those things that is wrong with this movie. I really fucking like the kills in this. Uh... I hear a lot of people badmouth the kills in this one, which I've never really understood. We get some really, really cool shit here. Um, the first, as I mentioned before, the first kill of the film being off screen is pretty disappointing. Yeah, we get a nice little shot of the ear and the tree and the reveal of him being dead. But, you know, for the first kill of the film, for the first kill of the Friday the 13th franchise being off screen, not the first kill of the franchise. <laughs> The first kill in quite a long time being off screen is rather disappointing. <clears throat> but um, besides that, man, we get some really cool shit. We get screwdrivers through the eye. We get fucking, um, well, we get fucking. <laughs> we get a lot of fucking. But anyways, uh, we get some really cool shit in here. We get a fucking arrow right through a guy's head. Jason's a hell of a shot in this uh, guy's on a, on a, like a boat with his girlfriend or whatever and they're riding around the lake and all of a sudden from an unimaginable distance I imagine that doesn't make any sense <laughs> unimaginable I imagine 
Anyways, from a pretty fucking long way away, um, just an arrow just whoop, flies right through this guy's head. Quick, easy, absolutely fucking brutal. I loved it. His girlfriend then ends up getting hit in the head with the fucking boat because she ends up falling. She's like doing the thing where you hang on in the back. I don't know what it's fucking called. <clears throat> but she ends up getting actually hit because the guy's fucking dead, obviously. He's not going to be do doing a whole lot of steering. So she gets hit in the head and I imagine pretty badly concussed. And she then sees Jason pull out his machete. She has to hide under the dock and she gets the machete right through the dock. Just boom. Right, right in the top of her head. Really cool shit. Uh, in the beginning, we get some really good ones. We get a sleeping bag kill where he actually strings this poor girl up over the fire and basically fucking cooks her, man. Like, she... Oh, God. That's, that's probably the most mean-spirited death in this movie. Like, he just... He fucking tortures that poor girl. And his, his, uh, her boyfriend's fucking in this bear trap and he has to watch it all happen. Watch her dead, burnt fucking body just spill out of this sleeping bag. It's absolutely brutal. Speaking of that guy, Whitney, when she gets back to the campsite after seeing her boyfriend get killed, uh, he gets a nice little machete right through the head. Just boom, right about to here. That's a killer kill. Killer kill. I'm having a real big problem with the way I'm talking today. <laughs> but anyways, that's a really good one. Uh, and th there's so many good ones in this. Uh, you get Chewy getting the screwdriver just slow as hell, man. He doesn't just boom. Like, because Chewie's trying to keep him back, but Jason's obviously Jason, so he's strong as all living shit. Just, like, slowly punctures his fucking throat. It, absolutely brutal. He's just, spitting up a bunch of fucking blood and shit killer uh guy gets an axe in the back and jason actually picks him up slams him down axe just <laughs> right out through his front <laughs> killer uh and you know i could just ramble on for days I'll, I'll leave a couple up to you to watch i think i basically went through a majority of them but Fuck it. I would hope you have you would have seen this movie by now if you're listening to the spoiler section in this. But anyways, on to my kill of the film. Like I said, lots of really, really good ones in this. But nothing, nothing can top Trent's death. Holy shit, man. The Friday the 13th franchise has its really, really shitty characters. Not, like, from a writing perspective, but, like, personality. Like, their actual characters are shitheads. Trent probably tops all of them. He is an absolute fucking douchebag. And I love that the worst character of this movie gets the best, most gruesome death. Debatably. Uh, like I said, that sleeping bag one's pretty killer. But as far as a visual aid or a visual standpoint best kill of the film by far at least in my opinion and there are a couple ones where if someone would have said that one i wouldn't have had a problem with it but uh but anyways so he's obviously they're running away from jason he and he actually says fuck you to jenna and clay and just goes off his own way and then Drops the gun in the lake and we get that awesome where the fuck are you gun line, which I, is hilarious. And then he ends up running into the middle of the road and he's looking at this truck and the truck stops. And you think, oh my god, this guy's going to pick him up. So he's just like standing there, which I'll admit is like, what the fuck are you doing? Go up to him. But it's too late. Jason stabs him through the gut. So he stabs him through the stomach. And the cut, the blade part of the machete is facing upward. So Jason basically picks up the machete on both ends with Trent in the middle. And just starts shimmying up this fucking guy's torso. And goes pretty far. You can't see a lot of it because it is a rather darkly lit scene. But you see enough of it to know what's happening. And it's just fucking killer, man. Trent's coughing up a bunch of blood. This is, at, this is in the unrated edition, by the way. Watch the unrated version of this movie. Uh, the sex scenes are uncomfortably long, especially I watched this movie with my mom. Uh, not on this go-around, but I, uh, 
I have seen it with her in the unrated version and it gets a little awkward. <laughs> but uh but for the kills, man, watch the fucking unrated version. Way better. And the the theatrical cut kind of butchers this kill. But anyways, just shimmies up this dude's fucking torso to where he's like cut from here to here. And then Jason just turns him around, plops him on the back of the truck, and the guy drives away. Oh my god, dude. What a great kill for a pretty good Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> But, uh, but all right, guys, that'll do it for me. Next time on this channel, we actually will not be doing a movie review. We are going to be ranking the Friday the 13th franchise from worst to best. I think there are going to be some surprises in there. Uh, I got a rough order, but I'm really going to look at it and make sure I got my shit in order because I don't want to just change my mind halfway through the, through the video. But uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I know I am. It's the first non-movie review video on the channel. And what a fucking way to introduce that <laughs> to the channel. Ranking the one of the most prolific Friday the 13th fran uh, One of the most prolific horror franchises of all time in Friday the 13th. Obviously, uh, this will be the end, unfortunately, of the Friday the 13th reviews. I know some people have been like, when the fuck are you going to review other shit? Stop reviewing Friday the 13th. Okay, fine. <laughs> I had to get it done. I said I would do it, and damn it, I did it. Which I'm very, very proud of. But uh, it's been really fun. Uh, I can't wait to get into some other stuff, though. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, guys, I hope you're looking forward to the ranking video. Uh, let me know what you want me to re review next. What series do you want me to review next? Please don't do this to me, camera. And all right, guys, that'll do it for me because my camera just shit itself. So <laughs> uh, all right, guys, take care of each other. Keep watching horror and I'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye.